So, uh, for your uh, uh, information, I am covering little basics of uh, remote sensing. So, uh, most of you are uh, all know that uh, satellites are used for uh, assessing the objects over the air. So, there are two types of uh, uh, satellites available. One is low orbiting satellites, which are used for remote sensing uh, observations, which are placed in the height of uh, around uh, 600 to 900 kilometer over the Earth's surface. Then geostationary orbits, orbited uh, satellites, which are placed at a height of 36,000 kilometer, which are used for uh, mainly the climate and uh, uh, tele uh, So, uh, when we think about the uh, application of remote sensing, we should have basic understanding of how it works. So, it is basically the electromagnetic spectrum. So, at a different wavelengths of electromagnetic spectrum, how we are uh, getting the information uh, over the different objects. So, this electromagnetic spectrum has a different bands. That is visible spectrum covering the, uh, the 400 to 700 nanometer then the infrared range, uh, then the thermal range microwave. So uh, each and every object has its own reflectance pattern, so which we are using to discriminate the objects, whether it is building, road, water body, agriculture. Agriculture means what is the crop, uh, what is the crop type, uh, stage of the crop. Like that, we are deriving many information using this uh, reflectance pa uh, pattern in different wa wave spectrum. So there are two types of uh, satellites. One is uh, optical remote sensing means we are using the reflectance from sunlight, capturing the reflectance from sunlight using the sensors. And another one is uh, this one, uh, we can uh, do it only during the daytime. And also whenever there is a cloud cover, we cannot uh, uh, use this thing because uh, only in the images, the clouds will be representing. That means we cannot derive the information about the crops uh, below the cloud. But for agriculture monitoring during most of our agriculture operations, it is a monsoonal type. So during the cropping season, it is mostly covered with the clouds. So because of that, we have limited uh, uh, applications on optical remote sensing. So from that only most of you might have heard about the word NDVA, all these things. But these things have limited application because of that here uh, in the past, the applications in agriculture was little limited, but now with the advancement of science, we have launched many microwave satellites which can penetrate the cloud and cover the information below the uh, cloud. So there are around uh, seven satellites across the globe and the TNA is having access to more than uh, five satellites. So uh, with uh, the strength of TNA, Department of Remote Sensing is uh, the same. The uh, application of SAR system, that is synthetic aperture radar system uh, for microwave remote sensing. So. Uh, once we are planning to use the, this remote sensing means, we should consider uh, four things before selecting any satellite or sensor. So one is the spatial resolution. That means uh, in any pixel of imagery, one pixel of imagery, how much area it corresponds to the ground area at the ground level. So for example, one meter resolution means it can discriminate the objects more than one meter size. That is the basic understanding. So in agriculture, we are using uh, 5 to 30 meter resolution sensors, especially this uh, uh, Sentinel, uh, Sentinel 5 meter and 20 meter, then LIS-4 with uh, 5 meter resolution. But large area monitoring, for example, uh, how much is the area under agriculture in Tamil Nadu, uh, the cropland area, not the crop type, crop stage or yield like that. So for that, we can use the large uh, force resolution that is 250 meter resolution modis data like that. Then uh, the spectral resolution that is visible or thermal thermal remote sensing mainly used for agriculture water management, drought assessment, uh, floods, uh, for these things we are using. Microwaves have a lot of applications in uh, crop monitoring, especially identifying the crop type, the uh, date of sowing, crop stage, uh, crop condition. That is, we can retrieve the leaf area index from the uh, microwave. Then integrating uh, this microwave data with the crop growth models, we can estimate the yield also. So, uh, and uh, another thing is the temporal resolution. Temporal resolution means uh, each and every uh, satellite has its own time to cover the same area 
that is called temporal resolution but that means for example sentinel you take uh, if it comes today means uh, only after 12 days it will visit a Coimbatore again so like that each and every place is covered at an interval of 12 days so uh, depending upon our requirement we should uh, consider uh, whether it is finer resolution so as to apply our uh, technologies at a field level uh, whether the revisit period is enough to cover all the operations for example if the temporal resolution is more than 25 days 25 days means uh, for example if uh, planting is uh, taken place uh, yesterday today is the, uh, the satellite uh, pass is there it will cover or otherwise if the planting is uh, taking place tomorrow then it will be covered only after 25 days so we should uh, give adequate importance for spatial spectral and the temporal resolutions so this is about the basics of uh, remote sensing so especially microwave remote sensing is highly suitable for crop monitoring so uh, the department of remote sensing uh, which is the tna is pioneer in establishing the department of uh, remote sensing uh, which is uh, uh, handling different theme areas that is uh, crop monitoring soil land resources disaster and water in crop mainly we are uh, targeting the crop area discriminating different crops assessing the crop area under different crops then crop health uh, then yield estimation integrating with the crop growth model finally we are applying all this crop information into uh, the insurance then soil uh, tnao has done the soil resource mapping one is to 50000 scale uh, throughout tamil nadu and the digital database is maintained uh, as an agency for tamil nadu and now we are targeting at a individual farm level soil mapping uh, we have uh, done for 18 blocks uh, now we have come out with advanced technology of uh, digital soil mapping using machine learning technique uh, in which uh, we can we are planning to cover the entire state at the 30 meter resolution each and every farm will have its own uh, soil details uh, that is what we are uh, planning then land degradation mapping we have mapped the information on salinity alkalinity then uh, other form, uh, area under mining all these things uh, and the land is change also how much area uh, area increase in uh, the urban uh, settlement then area reduction in agriculture like that all this change analysis also so the uh, this information it is uh, readily available for the department of agriculture horticulture or uh, agriculture engineering any official who, who wants to know the information about their area pertinent to these things can readily approach the department of remote sensing and get the data then the fourth one is the disaster so tnao has ensured the disaster preparedness for the department of agriculture as well as cra by providing the information pertinent to drought flood and cyclone so uh, drought uh, we have we are continuously monitoring with the different six uh, different parameters of uh, drought assessment using remote sensing uh, information then floods we are having the capability uh, to assess the or provide the information on uh, flood within uh, three to four hours from the uh, satellite pass. that is the advancement we are having over any other agency in india cyclone so recently in 2018 kaja cyclone we have assessed the damage on individual tree wise coconut plantation how many trees were uprooted damaged all these things we are doing we have done it with the satellite as well as the uh, drones then uh, water resource monitoring we are part of the tnia mp project and we have been assigned with the geotagging of interventions by different line departments besides we are using remote sensing techniques for uh, assessing the water resources that is water spread in tanks so we have the digitized uh, maps and the information about all the pwd tanks and uh, we are assessing the uh, water resources we are coming out with the storage information also for effective irrigation management so first one the crop mapping or crop uh, monitoring information uh, so our idea is to generate crop statistics then monitoring during the uh, crop growth stage then assessing the impact of flood and drought. So in crop statistics, we are using the satellite data integrated with the crop growth model, giving weightage to the weather, variety, soil and management practices. We are uh, assessing the end of season yield and validated with the uh, CCs conducted by the Department of Economics and Statistics. So we provide the information on crop area, seasonality, that is when the, so, uh, the progress of planting, 
then phenology that is at a given stage what is the uh, uh, area under different stages of crop how much area is under vegetative stage how much under flowering or maturity uh, how much area is ready for harvest all this information is generated then finally yield information all this information we generate at a district level block level and village level addressing the needs of pm fda also so crop monitoring large area monitoring we are using satellite data in the location specific we are using the drones so uh, we are assessing the moisture stress nutrient deficiencies coming out to the protocols for pest and disease assessment also so in flood and drought so <clears throat> we develop the information for mitigation strategies and uh, to manage the things for example ppfm uh, spraying where it can be taken taken up wherever the dry spells are there then if crop failure is there we pass on the information to insurances so through this information system we are uh, we are uh, helping the farmers extension officials insurers traders and the policy makers so this is how we are acquiring the satellite data sentinel 1a is the european uh, uh, satellite which we are getting the uh, data to once in uh, 12 days now they have launched the two satellites sentinel 1a and 1b every 6 days we are getting the information so uh, tamil nadu is covered by covered by eight scenes in two passes so that means one scene will cover 200 by 200 square kilometer and one scene of data it is around 1 gb so throughout the cropping period we go for around 15 pass data with the eight uh, scenes that means we are handling with the thousands and thousands and thousands of gbs of data that means uh, the system should be robust enough to deal with this much data uh, during the acquisition uh, analysis and the information transfer so tnau with the help of uh, tamil nadu state government as well as department of science and technology goa uh, we are having a uh, lot of externally funded schemes to uh, take care of this infrastructure facilities both on software as well as hardware so this is the db stack of satellite imageries what we have acquired during the cropping season so this is the stack of uh, uh, around 13 imageries one by one it is layered and in a click you can get information for all the 13 days for any pixel so in general for for your understanding uh, we are interpreting on technical terms for, but for you to interpret on uh, application side these uh, black ones are water bodies that is river river calron uh, these are all the, uh, the canals of kaveri uh, uh, then the white ones the bright ones are the settlement tirchi town tanjavur town uh, this is kumbagonam uh, tiruvarur tiruvarur like that uh, these are all the forest vegetations or uh, hilly areas with the forest vegetation here the coconut vegetations uh, the the permanent vegetation they exhibit lot of are they uh, reflect a lot uh, leading to brighter pixels and coming to the individual crops this is the delta region this green or light green all are uh, the rice area this one yellow ones are the maize pixels uh, sorry yellow ones are the cotton pixels and the brown ones these are all the maize area in perambalur and darilo this is viranam this is uh, uh, wellington dam uh, near titaguri so this are all the water bodies so like that this is the general information but based on the uh, technical information on how much is the back scattering this is the back scattering curve of any pixel for rice crop so at the flooding it is very minimum that is agronomic flooding when we irrigate the field flood it then transplant it it once the crop establishes it improve the back scattering increases and reaches a maximum so like that each and every crop we have discriminated with its own Uh, the the back scattering signatures and based on the values the minimum maximum the primary variation like that many uh, values are uh, parameters we are classifying the earlier shown image into crop maps so this is the rice area maps we have segregated only the rice pixel rice area late rice and the early rice so this is the rice area we are monitoring around 12000 hectare 12000 villages during sampa season and in the other season we are covering the remaining villages in uh, uh, the kharif that is kar season as well as the uh, aladi or uh, navare season we are monitoring especially in the north northeastern districts then this is the start of the season for each and every pixel 
we derive the start of the season on what date the plant uh, planting has happened so from that we are also deriving the maximum uh, the maximum uh, that is the peak of the season and the end of the season which are used for assessing the yield then uh, we validate all our uh, products using our ground truth collection so we are collecting the points across uh, the state uh, last year we have collected uh, more than 10000 points in different crops and uh, different uh, this thing in rice we have collected uh, more than uh, 2000 points this is uh, uh, in the selected districts of Tanjavur, Tiruvaru, Nagpatnam, Tirupalli and the crop area we are getting an uh, accuracy of 89 to 94% so this uh, once the accuracy is more than 85 percent we are releasing it so you can get the information on crop area at the district level block level and the village level so at the date wise also once in 12 days what is the progress of planting this is the information and we are also getting uh, we, we are uh, providing the data at the individual village level what is the progress of planting how much area is under rice at the 12 days interval and this information are used by the uh, shared with the state department of uh, agriculture and the des then by uh, inputting this remote sensing data and integrating it with the weather uh, soil soil files we are having tamil nadu uh, soil data we are having it uh, soil data varietal information management practices all these things uh, we are coming out with the rice yield pixelized and each and every field we can get to the rice yield so for any given field with the land long values, uh, I can give the rice yield at an accuracy of 87 to 93 percent. That is the uh, find and again and again uh, we have uh, proved our success and uh, it is uh, well appreciated by the uh, state government. And uh, and uh, this is the yield in case of normal conditions during 2017 in the Delta region. The yield levels are more than four tonnes, whereas in the same year. Uh, in the uh, Ramnagaram district, the crop failures and the total yield loss were, uh, has happened. That was clearly captured and resulting in uh, the insurances and the relief also. And uh, the varietal spread. So this is the varietal spread we have uh, uh, mapped using the GIS uh, systems and uh, the, uh, the mainly the uh, BPT variety. BPT variety rules a lot and TNA varieties uh, mainly the ADT varieties and the uh, Pony, uh, the CR1009. These are all the each and every variety. What is the spread we are assessing? So the Co51 is the recently released variety. The spread in different villages we have assessed. So all the varietal information uh, we are generating, especially we are targeting for uh, rice and the maize crop. This can be uh, generated. Then uh, for maize crop, we are assessing the area as well as yield. Using here, we are integrating the DSAT crop growth model. We have done it for uh, Arilur and the Perambalur districts and uh, with, an, uh, with an accuracy of 90 to 91 percent. And the sugarcane, we have done the sugarcane mapping in uh, uh, Kadalur and the Vulupuram district, where the area, uh, area under sugarcane in Tamil Nadu is getting reduced. Now, the state government, uh, the, uh, the, the commissioner of sugars and the private industries. Uh, they are planning to increase the area by uh, by uh, providing different schemes mm, through different schemes. So for that, we have assessed the suitability map. So what are all the areas where we can uh, uh, target the sugarcane uh, planting? That is the then coconut. The whole state the coconut map we have hosted in our DNA Agritech portal for any uh, any village or any place you can get to the plantation. So uh, we have also given the tool. Uh, for assessing the area for uh, any program any subsidy or input distribution whatever may be you can select the plantation any farmer comes for claim or uh, comes for uh, subsidies then you can uh, assess the area you can map that area uh, assess, calculate the area under his farm uh, okay 1.32 hectare like that you can we have provided the tool also so that we can uh, precisely uh, help the farmers and the duplications can be avoided and we have also given the the soil constraints in that area in each and every plantation what are all the management practices we have to think of all these things are provided in that map it is it can be accessed in the dna agritech portal and now we are targeting the plantations also mango cashew banana citrus 
in Kashi, we have done it in Arilo district, uh, Banana in uh, seven or eight districts, uh, we have done the mapping. Every year we are uh, targeting it. Now we have developed the methodology, so at any point of time we can use it. But for the plantations, uh, the perennial uh, uh, tree plantations like uh, cashew, mango, we are uh, developing the database which can be used at any uh, any decision making process. Then disaster uh, management. So we are using uh, satellite and drone technology to assess the impact of disasters. This is the one, uh, the 2015 floods in uh, Karalu disease. The blue ones are a, a flooded area, black ones are already existing water bodies. So we have the technology to discriminate the newly flooded area. And uh, here, since our microwave uh, sensors are highly uh, sensitive to the uh, to the moisture, we are coming out with the flood information at 99% accuracy level. And uh, we have also helped the uh, TNA and the State Department to distribute the 50 tons of paddy coke given seeds. Uh, where the young uh, transplanted seedlings were destroyed to go for the replanting. Then drought, we are providing the drought information at uh, 10 to 15 days interval to the state uh, state government. So mainly the NDVA, NDWI, MEI, as well as the uh, rainfall departure and the standard precipitation index. And uh, for the satellite based products, we are having 20 years of historical data for SPA and uh, rainfall departure we are having 38 years of information so at any point of time the whenever the information is requested from the director of agriculture or from the um, the district collectorate through PA agree you can contact us and get the information on these things normally uh, many of the JDS contact us many of the uh, officials may not be knowing this uh, these things are available with the DNA department of remote sensing. So for that, I am informing that at any point of time, any information related to the, these things can be uh, obtained from us. Or even if it is not available with us, if you request us, uh, we will generate the data and share with you. And uh, this is the NDV map of uh, 2016. The red ones are the completely drought affected or my sisters, the areas where the total crop failure has uh, happened. And we have declared 31 districts as uh, moderate to severe drought affected. The, based on our mm, report only, the declaration was made and uh, the drought relief of uh, 1,870 crores was obtained from the state and uh, central government. So the uh, government of India has accepted our report and released the, the drought relief. Then the cyclone damage assessment, Gaja cyclone happened in 2018. It caused severe damage to plantations in uh, Nagapatnam, Thiruvarur, Kutukote districts, we have assessed the coconut trees uprooted. Uh, this is the uh, drone uh, drone imagery of uh, uh, copper type drone. And the, we have assessed the, the uprooted plantations to be 38.74 lakhs. And it was accepted and based on which the, uh, the reliefs were provided. And next one, the soil mapping, soil resource mapping. Uh, now, uh, earlier we are having the uh, manually uh, done the survey with the help of satellite imageries, one is 3000 scale. Now we are targeting uh, that can be used at the block level only. Now we are targeting at the individual farm level. So for that, we are going for digital soil mapping techniques using integrating different uh, uh, the satellite data as well as uh, the recent tools of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and the machine learning. So through which we are, uh, we are generating the the soil texture, soil organic carbon, hydraulic properties, erosion map, all these things can be obtained in a click you can get for individual fields. That is the thing. So uh, for any field, we can give the, the basic soil information that we have uh, we have, uh, we have done it for Coimbatore district. Now we are uh, through the DBT project, we are targeting for other, uh, other districts in collaboration with the uh, ITC Netherlands. This is the block level soil information system. For any block, you can get this uh, information uh, with us. So from this, you can derive the, uh, the crop planning, the land use or land suitability classes, uh, especially uh, for any schemes in, uh, in designing any schemes, this data can be used. And we also discuss the individual forms also. So for the uh, whole Thiruvaru district, we have generated the cadastral map. 
for each and every form we have the information on the farmer details, a survey number, then the soil details, pH, organic carbon, nutrients, such as, uh, that is the NPK, the micronutrient, all these things we have uh, done it. Now we are targeting Perambur and uh, Kadalur district. Uh, and integrating all these things, uh, uh, now uh, we have come out with the user-friendly IoT technology that is mobile application called DNA Soil Data, which will be released during this year's uh, scientific workers conference. So in this, the, the main thing is, uh, so uh, first you have to uh, center your location. Once you get to your location detail, in a click, you can get the, the information about your soil in your field. That is the soil, uh, soil series, texture, the major nutrients, then uh, exchangeable sodium percentage, which is an indicator of uh, uh, alkalinity, bulk density, hydraulic properties, including the nutrients also. So based on that, once you uh, go for a click the recommendation button, then you have to select the crop, uh, which crop, for example, maize means it is a hybrid or variety, then irrigated or rain fed, input your area, uh, 0.4 hectare like that, then you will get the fertilizer recommendation, the nutrient based recommendation as well as in terms of the um, fertilizer, in terms of fertilizer. Uh, so all the farmers, uh, they can use it the official sections and officials as well as farmers now we have improved this with uh, integrating the information on salinity alkalinity all the land concerns and we have integrated the crop production gate technologies also so it will be useful for the officials also to generate the information on the, all these things then the soil doctor uh, not only your location if you are sitting in some place if you have the lat long values you can input and get the information then uh, we are also we have also given the given a navigation tool so uh, where this uh, tna soil uh, testing laboratories are uh, the tna stations are there so you can get the uh, uh, get the route map so the any farmer can get the access and the route map to the, uh, the testing laboratory so that he can get the information and we have given uh, the tool given the option so he can use uh, the recently obtained soil information, input it and get the fresh recommendation. That is how we have designed the soil doctor, which will be used, uh, which will be released during the scientific workers conference. Then we have done the rain fed area map. This we can, you can very well use it in your uh, dry land mission, where these dry lands are located in each and every block, how much area is under dry land, or each and every village, how to allocate your dry land mission uh, technology demonstration or subsidy scheme for which you can use it. Then saltopeter soils, where this uh, saltopeter soils, salinity, alkalinity, the severity, whether mild, moderate, all these things are available. Recently, we have shared the information with the agriculture engineering department, where they are coming out with a lot of uh, schemes and proposals. In agriculture department also, this reclamation of saltopeter soils scheme is there, means where the soil is there, what is the soil condition, you can retrieve and uh, apply your technologies and for this technology transfers you can make all these remote sensing products as a tool then changes in length of growing period uh, in the last 20 years you can see from here you can see from here uh, in 2001 around 80 percent of the area was having the length of growing period of more than uh, more than uh, 100 days that means 100 to 150 days duration that means the farmers were going for double cropping or long duration crops like that but it has come down to around 40 percent or 30 percent now now the area under 75 to 100 days duration has increased that means the farmers are forced to go for uh, only single crop of millets or pulses so for uh, generating or developing the alternate crop plan at the block level you can use this uh, length of growing period information already we have shared uh, uh, these things with the uh, the director of crop management to come out with the plan for individual blocks this is the water resource information system through satellites we are monitoring all the pwd tanks and other water bodies and we are extracting the information on the water spread now we have developed the tool for water storage analysis also. and this is the um, uh, geotagging app which the all the line departments we are monitoring all the interventions from the different line departments 
ఫిఫ్టీ అండ్ ఏ అగ్రికల్చర్ హార్టికల్చర్ ఏఈడి మార్కెటింగ్ ఫిషరీస్ ఎవరింగ్ అండ్ వీఆర్ అసెసింగ్ ది ఇంపాక్ట్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ టెక్నాలజీస్ ఆల్సో సో నౌ వీ హ్యావ్ కమ్ అవుట్ విత్ ద టూల్ టు అసెస్ ది అట్ ప్రెసెంట్ దెర్ ఈస్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అవై అవైలబుల్ అబౌట్ ది రిజర్వాయర్స్ యూ కెన్ గెట్ ద ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అబౌట్ మే టూర్ ఆర్ ఎనీ మేజర్ రిజర్వాయర్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద స్టోరీస్ ఇదే బట్ దెర్ ఆర్ అరౌండ్ సెవెంటీన్ థౌసండ్ పీడబ్ల్యూడి ట్యాంక్ అండ్ థర్టీ థౌసండ్ లోకల్ వాటర్ బాడీస్ అక్రాస్ ది స్టేట్ బట్ నో వేర్ యూ కెన్ గెట్ ద ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ హౌ మచ్ వాటర్ ఈస్ అవైలబుల్ సో ది టోటల్ కెపాసిటీ ఆఫ్ దీస్ ట్యాంక్స్ ఇట్ అకౌంట్స్ ఫర్ అరౌండ్ హండ్రెడ్ టీఎంసి సో ఇట్ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు ది స్టోరేజ్ కెపాసిటీ ఆఫ్ మేటూర్ డ్యామ్ సో దీస్ ది ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డెవలప్ అండ్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు కమ్ కమ్ అవుట్ విత్ ది వాటర్ రిసోర్స్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ సిస్టమ్ ఇన్ కొలాబరేషన్ విత్ ది డెల్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ నెదర్లాండ్స్ సో ఫ్రమ్ దట్ ఫర్ ఎనీ ట్యాంక్ ఐ కెట్ యూ కెన్ ప్లాన్ ది జ్యుడిషియస్ యూస్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ అండ్ వాటర్ రిసోర్సెస్ అండ్ వీఆర్ ఆల్సో వర్కింగ్ విత్ ద ఏఈడి టు కమ్ అవుట్ విత్ ద ఆటోమేటెడ్ ఇరిగేషన్ సిస్టమ్ అట్ ది ట్యాంక్ లెవెల్ యూసింగ్ ది ఓపర్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ అండ్ ద సాయిల్ మైక్స్ ఇన్ ద రెవెన్ త్రో రిమోట్ సెన్సింగ్ డేటా దెన్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద అన్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంటల్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ యూ మే నాట్ బి మచ్ కన్సర్న్ బట్ ఎన్ ఏవ్ ఐఎమ్ ప్రెసెంటింగ్ ఇస్ ద మీథెన్ ఎమిషన్ ఫ్రమ్ ది బ్యాడీ ఫీల్డ్ అసెస్ ఆన్ డైలీ బేసిస్ మీథెన్ ఎమిషన్ ఆల్సో వీ హెవ్ అసెస్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ అన్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంటల్ ఇండికేటర్ ద ది డేటా ఇండికేట్స్ దట్ the methane emission from our fields of kaveri uh, delta are within the limits prescribed by the ipcc so now we have the drone capabilities also we have three types of drone one is uh, the copter type drone uh, for uh, localized monitoring of pest and diseases it's a wing uh, it is a plane type uh, it can fly at a speed of uh, 100 to 120 kilometers and it can cover 40 square kilometer in a day and it has an endurance of uh, uh, one hour with multi spectral uh, sensors we can monitor anything in a plot so with the swarm of uh, drones we can assess the disasters in a, within a day or two then third one uh, we have the advanced spraying drone that is a uh, normal you might have seen some of these spraying drones which are operated by uh, uh, battery of which are battery operated so we have the advanced fuel operated drone which can uh, which is operating with the uh, uh, petrol it can fly for 3 hours the endurance is 3 hours and uh, the payload is uh, it can carry weight of 45 kg and uh, spray fluid we can um, use up to 16 liters so at any uh, whatever may be the area in one day we can cover 100 acres so uh, one hectare can be covered in 5 minutes now we have formed a team comprising uh, the plant protection scientists physiologists soil scientists to standardize the uh, drone based spraying techniques and we will be coming out in a, uh, within a year to the standardized uh, methods for especially we are, first we are targeting the application of uh, the boosters that is pulse wonder now already lot of work has been done on standardizing pulse wonder spray in thermal valley and to good use in some parts of uh, delta also so this is the imagery so in satellite we are getting the resolution of 3 meter to 30 meter in street for agriculture whereas in drone we are getting the resolution of 5 centimeter so each and every plant we can observe it with the uh, advanced drone technology and uh, all these things the, the crop information for the first time we have used it in the crop insurances so we have identified the good crop failed crop uh, and Uh, we have uh, helped the state government in settling around 2500 crores crores in uh, paddy fields of uh, the coastal district of swanganga and ramnath and to, during 2017 18 when there was a dispute between the state government and the insurance companies our technology was useful in uh, claiming or uh, pro- proving the claims of the state department of agriculture and getting the uh, claims of 420 crores and Uh, we are also providing information on the anticipated crop failure through leaf area index for rice crop then uh, we have come out with the smart sampling techniques for uh, optimizing the crop cutting experiments so with our satellite based uh, smart sampling technology we can reduce 50% of the ccs which is a burden to all our agriculture officials uh, and a lot of manpower and time is consumed in this angle now with the revised pmfua guidelines 
there is a two tier approach uh, whether to conduct the cce or not in any district is decided based on uh, this remote sensing methodology once the uh, satellite based observation is made for one district that this district is not affected by any calamity or any stress any loss is not there no crop cutting experiments uh, is uh, conducted for that uh, district so like that uh, two type uh, two tier approach is uh, coming which is going to be implemented from the rabi 2021 uh, and this is the mechanism what we have developed uh, the self managed swift dispute resolution mechanism adopted in insurance and a lot of support has been given and the state government has uh, already approved the usage of our technology and uh, uh, from 2019 to 21 even in the revised uh, uh, pmf also the tenders have been called for in which it has been mandated that all the insurance companies should use cnau remote sensing technology and uh, the stakeholder feedback it is highly encouraging our uh, honorable agriculture production commissioner uh, is uh, always motivating us in generating lot of special information helping the state department of agriculture to come out with a quicker decision making and uh, way forward uh, we are targeting different things one is the uh, fertilizer recommendation at the uh, individual field level through mobile iot technologies then in crop mapping and monitoring we are targeting uh, the at the individual farm level then in uh, disasters we are coming out with the uh, lot of innovations and uh, technologies to assess the damages at the individual field level moreover now we are uh, uh, designing the methodology to come out with the automated adangal system including the land parcel information as well as the crop information generated with the help of uh, satellites and the drone technology and uh, uh, to conclude the application of